Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We've got a great show lined up for you because we're going to be demonstrating something very, very exciting. This is what's coming up on the show. However, Paul and Joe and I are joined by Ryan Phillips, who is a service engineer from Eurospark. Thank you for joining us. No problem, glad to be here. <laughs> it's a full house today as apart well. From, apart from one, we're missing one, aren't we? I know one. it's coming up later in the show, but we're missing one. Oh, okay, yes. However, I do want to uh, say a massive congratulations to to Mark, who has just climbed ETAP, which is very, very impressive. But also, Paul, didn't you say that Joe's been? Yeah, he's been on his bike as <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, really? See here. So, what, what happened, mate? You uh, hmm? went out for a leisurely Sunday morning ride, trying to keep up with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Something about stones and glass houses. But... <laughs> and you've, you've lost loads of weight, haven't oh, you? Don't, uh, don't, oh, don't, don't always come on again. Right, let's get on with it. <laughs> Ryan, do you feel sorry for these guys? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> not at all, you love it. Right, okay, Ryan, um, can you give us a little bit of an overview of Eurospark, where you're based in the UK, who you are, what you do? Uh, well, we're based in Leicester, uh, fairly central to the UK, so we cover the whole of the UK as well. Um, specialize in EDM. Uh, we sell the Joe Mars brand, which is what we're going to show you today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the range of EDM, so that's CNC machines, wire machines, and EDM jewels as well, uh, and the little tap buster. Um, and we do a few pre owned machines that obviously we get back as and when we sell new machines or find them on the internet and what have you. Um, and also, we do do a CNC drill, which we've just started, I think, sometime last year. That was uh, the, 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 the hand cook we looked at, which is yes. on this video here. Yeah. Have you had much success with it? I've uh, had a lot of interest in the machine. Um, it's a great machine, obviously does things that we couldn't previously offer. And, and we've been very happy so far. So, what, what does it do? Just tell us what that machine does before we come um, to the tap bust. It is just a, a regular hole drill, um, but this one is a CNC, so you can do multi-holes, whereas the previous one that we offered was only just sort of, you put it on manual machine pickup with uh, hand wheels. This one, you can basically have a full fixture set up if you've got multi components to do, and essentially just press a button and you can leave it to spark. Well, it seems like it's depths, diameters, what, what's the, what's the uh, This one will do up to six mil as standard, um, and it's got 360 mil under the head, so you can get some quite tall components in there. Um, is, is there much programming involved, or do you just literally put in the depth of the hole and diameter of the, the electrode? And uh, essentially, the essentially, yeah, you can load a DXF file on there, so you can just sort of point and click at holes, and it'll pull them off and create a program. If you've just got sort of a, a pitch program, you can put in essentially the, the pitch depth, uh, distance sorry, and then the number of repeats, and it will also just write a program for you from that. There's a lot of competition in the EDM drill market. Mm. Well, you, you've, you've bought this in, you've obviously got big ambitions with it, but mm. how do you compete? What, what's, your, what's kind of your USPs with this machine? Are we talking price? Are we talking the fact availability? Uh, one or some of the things that Joe mentions, control maybe? Uh, one of the big things with this machine is you can pick up, uh, it's a small compact machine, so it'll fit in pretty much any workshop, and it is uh, basically a couple of thousand more than a standard EDM drill that you can buy elsewhere. So, big selling point is the price on this one. I'm sure a lot of people will know the answer to this question, but it's always good to ask. What's the difference between using this and, and, and let's say, drilling small holes? Uh, one of the big things with this is uh, you can go down to such small diameters, sort of down to 0.3, um, and there's not... The I'm talking about drilling holes on a machine rather yeah, than... Yeah, yeah, there's, there's not, not the risk of breaking drills. Obviously, with a 0.3 drill on a, a standard drill, you can break it. If you break it, then you have to spend the time to get it out. All the spark rest of it. it out. Yes. <laughs> spark it out. <laughs> right here. here we go. Um, whereas you don't have that issue with this, um, and there's also there's no force involved. It's all done by the passage of a spark. So there's no force, no wear parts in it. It's just gently servo driven down, and all of the work's done just by the, the jumping of a spark between the electrode and the component. How about the deformation in the material? Is there anything to the structure of the material? Um, not anything that you need to worry about. Um, in some aerospace parts, you have to monitor there's the thing called the recast layer, which people are concerned about, but we haven't had any issues with the machines that we've sold. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but with this, with the material, you select the material in the control, don't you? And then it works out the, the, yeah. the, the parameters of what yeah. the machine's so going to do. Yeah, you'll tell it the, the electrode material that you've got in there. 
Uh, I think there's technology for whether you're doing steel or doing different materials depending on what you're sparking. Um, and then again, you just put in the materials that you're going to be using and then it pulls out the default settings that are in theory the best ones to use for those materials. I want to see a demonstration, but before we okay. see a demonstration of the Tap Buster, mm -hmm. can we kind of explain to people who are going to use this mm -hmm. and why are they going to use this? Okay, uh, essentially any machine shop could have a use for this. We've sold it to military, we've sold it to um, Formula One companies, oil, gas, all the rest of it. One of the big selling points is it's portable, but also an example, the Formula One, they break a tap in an engine block that's maybe got 10 or 12,000 pounds worth of work in it. Yes. It's paid for itself and the first time you use it. Okay. So fundamentally, what, what, what is the operation that you're doing with this machine? And I know we've got some examples there of, mm -hmm. of taps. Uh, so primarily it's used for taking out broken drills and taps. Um, because it's EDM, it can spark through hard materials, carbides or what have you for the drills. Um, that is the main function. Sometimes people will use it if they've got just a really very primitive putting a hole into something. You can do that with it. Um, if it's conductive, it will spark it. So you can, if there's any other applications that you can think of for that, then you can do it. But primarily it's for taking out broken taps and drills and studs and what have you. What Never. about simple things like running costs? What are you using? Is this just normal water? Is it? Uh... It is just tap water. Uh, there's an argument to say deionized water is better, but for doing something like this, I don't think you can notice. And the electrode, is that a standard? Just standard brass, off-the-shelf brass, so not expensive at all. So running costs is pretty economical. Yeah, it's and it's just on a standard 13 amp as well. Yeah. So it can be used pretty much anywhere. I'm ready. I think, I think <laughs> we're ready. Is this when the TV and all the lights go <laughs> <get> in? <laughs> no. uh, cross your fingers. Have confidence, Joe. <laughs> Joe broke this tap earlier, didn't he? This is a, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you're dreadful at breaking taps, aren't Evidently. you? Evidently. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so really the control wise, there's three power settings depending on the electrode diameter. Um, it's got an auto retract on it, so there's a depth stop on the front of the head. You can program a depth if you want. Um, you have to account for electrode wear, which is normally somewhere around 40 or 50% on this. Um, and there's an arc. If you've got a sort of a really small hole, if it gets any debris underneath it, if the flushing's not very good or if the just being submerged isn't enough to clear the hole, then it sort of backs off to try and allow for more flushing, more water to try and clean it out, which it will do automatically and you can adjust that depending on your hole size. But apart from that, you just position it roughly over the centre of the tap and then just press go and it will start <coughs> making a mess. Don't, don't do does, does it feed at a particular rate? Uh, it will just feed based on the spark that it sees. So it will feed at a set rate, if it then sees there's an issue with the hole, it'll then back off and then slow down, come back in. So it, that's all automatic, just based on the spark that it can sense at the bottom. And does it know when it's finished the job? Uh, there is the depth drop, like I say, on the front. So yeah. once you get that set, it will spark to the depth, take into account the electrode wear, and then once you get to the depth, then it's finished. And it again, it has got the retract to bring it out of the hole as well. How many of these are you selling? Um, Hundreds a year, dozens a year? Uh, not hundreds, probably close to 50 a year. Um, we sell, we've got, pretty much got them on back order the whole time. Um, periodically we'll just have a spat where we'll sell 10 maybe in a month and then we'll be run out so we have to reorder again. And, um, and, and is there a, um, a, a specific purchaser, you know, you, you, the subcontract engineers or is it, is it the Formula One guys, uh, is it the big, big, it, big... It's all over. We sold quite a lot to oil and gas in recent years when that had sort of a bit of a boom. Um, again, big components, expensive components. Um, and also, if it's on an oil rig in the middle of... Yeah, perfect the, for that. Then yeah. you're not going to get another machine it's out Well, a war zone anywhere, isn't yeah. it? You stop it now, just keep it noisy, but... Don't go anywhere. Coming up next, cycle time challenge, because we're going to get you involved in this. Put you well. on the spot. Oh, wow. It'll be machining, not EDM. <laughs> Let's do it. Cycle time challenge. Quite a unique project this week to look at back in the office. I'm with Andrew Becker from Cambridge Dynamics. Andrew, this machine is a collaboration between Fanuc and yourselves. It's a, it's, a, it's a production machine, essentially, isn't it? Before we start this, what do you always do on a Friday? Watch Sword and Chips. Okay, great. Well, this week, what we're going to be featuring is this part. We want people to guess the cycle time that this component can be made on, on this, call it a multi-spindle machine. Is that how you describe it? Correct. 
Okay, so tell us about the part firstly and tell us how fast it was being made in the, in the previous way. So the part is um, part of a steering system. It's a steel tube. It's a low carbon steel. It uh, gets a hundred mil bore in it. It gets a thread tapped in it, a 1.5 um, pitch thread tapped in it. And then it gets a slot cut all the way through to a depth of around 80 mils. Uh, the previous operation was taking around six minutes. Is it, because rem this is both sides, isn't it? So this yes. is double ended. So this is a double ended part. Both sides are identical in this particular piece. So how long was it taking in, in total then machining time in the old format, in the old way? It was taking about three minutes per side with a 30 second changeover in between. So around six and a half minutes. Including handling time, six and a half minutes. So now with this machine, bearing in mind we've got a multi-spindle operation. So essentially what we're doing, Andrew, isn't it? We're machining both sides at the same time, doing the operations together. Correct. We're machining both sides at the same time and we're machining more than one component at the same time. Okay, so back to you guys uh, out there and also in the office. How fast is this part being made now? Oh, he, he, threw a he, yeah. he threw a spanner in the works, didn't he, at the end there? By saying that there's more, they're doing more than one at once. Parts at one go. So you would, you would equate the cycle time based on, yeah, per part, basically. Per part. Regardless of how many you're doing at a time, how many, yeah, how, how quick is it making that part? What do you think, Ron? Uh, two minutes. Two minutes, okay, two so minutes. it was six, did he say six? Mm -hmm. Down to two, what do you think, Joe? It, it could be. And is it like is it like a sliding head? Was it drilling and, and machining the OD at the same time? And yeah, yeah. He's doing all of the operations I in bet, kind of simultaneous form. Frighteningly quick, I bet. I'm gonna go. I could get egg in my face here. Can I? Fine. I'm gonna go I'm with 35 seconds. 35 seconds. Okay. 35 seconds. Remember, you can comment on YouTube or on all of our social media channels on our LinkedIn profiles or on Facebook, uh, and the winner will get a prize as they always do and that will be announced next week on the uh, on the ticker mtd on location guys can't be with you in the studio again i'm at extract now these guys are very big into our transmissions for the motorsport industry i'm here with neil who's the inspection manager here neil i know you watch sport and chips but uh could you tell us what extract actually do yeah we manufacture uh, design build and manufacture really uh, gearboxes and transmission solutions, mainly for the motorsport market. And is that sort of things like uh, Formula One, for instance, or? Yeah, uh, Formula uh, One, a World Rally Championship, touring cars, uh, Le Mans type LMP1 cars, uh, Indy cars in America. We're very big over there. And, and is there a new sort of element coming in for like electric cars? Are you, yes. are you looking at? Yeah, electric cars is, is, is definitely the future. Um, so we are looking at, and we have products to go into electric cars. Um, and how, how big is Extract now as in employees? It's about 320 people currently. And how long have you been going? Uh, 33 years this year. We've just reached our 33rd birthday. So really it's a, it's a great UK success story here and, and we see a lot of, uh, uh, of customers components and products like Mitotoy behind you. You've got a number of different uh, CMMs for you. A lot of machine tools from Matsura. It, it's, it's a big player here isn't it? Yes definitely. Uh, we've expanded rapidly in the 90s from being a, a few a few people 15 20 people up to the size we are now and, and moving to this factory in the year 2000 was a, a big step for us and has allowed us to really expand to where we are now thanks neil now i may take a while coming back to the studio because motorsport's my passion extracts is where i'm going to be see you guys mtd network Welcome to the Network Update. I'm on the sofa with the lovely Colin today. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. I haven't seen you for ages. I know I haven't. Why? Have you been on a diet? A diet? Yeah, same diet as Joe. Oh, God. Okay, I'm pregnant. There's yeah. a little baby in <laughs> yeah. my belly. Put, put it on, wait. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, so if you don't know anything about the Network, please explain to everybody what it's about. Just very quickly. Engineers want to be in the machine shop making components, mm -hmm. so we do the marketing promoting for them. So we'll put out videos, their news, their capacity to the UK engineering industry buyers and OEMs around the country. Yeah, and then the other side of it. Buyers, they want to get quotes for components. They don't want to go to 20, 30, 40 different engineers. 
they just put it on our website and we'll get quotes for them. So, so putting the two together. Putting the two together. Nice and, and simple. we've got some success stories as well today. We certainly have. Before we get to those, have you updated the website a little? We have. <laughs> the theme of today is about investing, keeping things fresh and moving on with technology. So we thought we should do that with the website as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a newer, fresher look. Same as before in terms of you've still got your videos, your news, your capacity, but it's just, you know, you've got nice and easy, request a quote, join the network, so easy user interface. Yep, certainly is. You can see what's trending, the latest stories there, what's trending. So you can see DKW, for example, Swarthwood Chips, Tool Engineering. So that's it, new website. Yeah, and then if people obviously want the work, they put it out and, and, yep. and so forth across the top. Nice and easy. Okay, perfect. So success stories, Cake Andy. Cake Andy indeed. <laughs> Basically, he's can been on the show. Now? Um, and his wife kindly made us lots of cake, so I always remember <gasps> him. Uh, I don't think it was his wife. You can't say that. <laughs> it was. Um, and so Andy Sues, um, his wife brought in loads of cakes from Bedford C&C, but he's been investing. He has. Again, key to, key to today is invest in keeping ahead with technology. So he's bought himself a new CMM and his new toy, a slide and head lay with Ianka Bar Feed. Absolutely loves it. You know what, when he was last on the show as well, he was actually talking about the growth in the business and how he wants yeah. to grow the business. So it's lovely to hear perfect. that, that, you know, that is yes. perfect. So send him some slide head work. <laughs> yes. Um, Empire, they've just invested in uh, the use of solid cam. That's right. So um, what happened, potential customers saw one of the videos that we'd done for um, Empire, came to them with some products. These products you can see on the screen here. Mm -hmm. um, they're very much into slide heads, so big batch runs. This wasn't such big, such big batch runs, but with the help of solid cam, they're able to um, manufacture the component. And there's 28,000 lines of code, but solid cam software enables them to do it really quickly and efficiently. And they're getting nice regular work out of it, which is what every engineer wants. Regular, regular yep, work. Definitely. That's like gold dust to everybody. Really is, so yes. bread and butter, and then having your specials and everything. Yep. Okay. Next up, got a lot of time for these guys. Sub C and C. They're so active. Jan and George. They're on social media. They're at shows. They yep. they are really good. You can see their video was trending a moment ago. Are they investing? Yeah, definitely investing. So yeah, we promote engineers on the network, but they're they're so good at doing it themselves. Though yeah, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, etc. Investing in Ionka bar feeds. They've got loads of them. They've got um, expanded machine shop. Mm -hmm. and they, we've done a video about their bar feeders, and also they've got the LFV. I have to get that the right way around. Yeah. Low frequency vibration machine, sliding head machine, mm -hmm. whereby you're not getting a bird's nest on a component, which is slowing down production. So it's keeping the spindles turning, keeping them more efficient, and winning them business. Brilliant. Oh, and um, DKW, um, yeah, just a few more. Yep. So, um, they're, just, they're making some parts on their, spa, uh, their star machine, but there's a lot of parts. Isn't there is there? a lot of parts, yeah. Carl at DKW, always keeping ahead, forefront of technology. They've got a contract for a million parts. Wow. They're only tiny parts. I've actually done a video about it. Holding them in my hand, you can't see them, which is good because there's, there's an NDA, so ah, yeah. solve that problem. But tiny little parts, a million of them, they're ahead of schedule with their star machine. So really, really impressive stuff. The thing is, if they're investing in machines, they're ahead of schedule, then they've got their more capacity and it just shows they're busy, isn't yes, it? Yes, definitely. Uh, a success story of a brand new customer yes. on the network. BCMZ, our friend Glenn Boydell. Um, they joined the network recently. First inquiry they got, they won the business, so they're over the moon with that. You can't really get much better than that, no, can you? Definitely. And so. we've just been out and done some videos for them. I have to apologise to Glenn because we filmed on the mezzanine overlooking the workshop, had the doors open, and he, was having it. he wasn't very comfortable with that because I'm not sure he was happy with heights. So apologies, watch your space for videos. <laughs> but he's won a contract, so that's fine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, last but by no means least, uh, CJ. S. Now they're up for a CJS challenge. CJS CNC. I struggle yeah. with that. Bit Sorry, yeah. <laughs> CJS CNC. They're up for a challenge. They are. It's a, you know, it's a relatively small machine shop. Four, four engineers. Great experience. So they haven't got all the latest sort of state of the art technology. All these five axis That's machines right. and things like that. What they have got though is some great machines which they work to the maximum. So send them any challenge. And some of the, I was out, Chris, who you can't see behind the camera, but they are, they were doing yeah loads of parts. Um, motorbike, motorbike parts. Yeah, jet engine parts. Yeah, all um, sorts. electrical housing as well. That's right. Yeah. But the stuff they are making is really really impressive. So and if you said to me what industry, you're supposed to say to me what industry. Oh, <laughs> sorry, what industry, Colin? <laughs> Any industry, yeah. any material, they like a challenge. So reverse engineering, solutions, get in contact with CJS. 
Perfect. Yep. Right, well, sounds like everyone's very happy. Is there any room left on the network for people to join? There is. As I, as I say to all my engineers, we're, only, we're going to limit it to the amount of engineers we have because we don't want to dilute the quotes and the quality no. of work they're getting. So there is a few spaces left, but not many. To get in touch then. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Colin. Lindsay, thank you. Deal of the week. If you've aspired to buy a DMG Mori machine in the past but thought it was either out of your reach or out of your price range, today I'm going to show you something that may make you change your mind. Behind me I have an X demonstration DMG Mori NT 4300 meter between centers or meter turning length mill turn machine tool. As I've said already, this is an X demo machine. It's available for sale. There's a lot of features about this machine that you need to talk to DMG Mori about in more detail. But just to start, I'd like to tell you that this has got DCG technology, which controls the vibration when you're machining, which is obviously one of the main enemies for any engineer or any machinist. That makes this machine an extremely precision machine tool. Also, the B-axis head, the milling spindle, is housed in a box-in-box -box construction, which again gives you supreme rigidity. It is a 12-inch chuck machine. It comes with various options. You can do full five-axis simultaneous machining on it. And as I've said already, on more than one occasion, it is available from stock here at DMG Mori as an X-Demo machine. So the size of the machine and what the capabilities are and what size of part you can machine within it. The x-axis on this machine has 750 millimeters. I like the y-axis plus or minus 210 mil. That's got to be thanks to the flat bed design of this machine, which also gives you uh, an extreme rigidity without any distortion, another feature that DMG Mori are proud to offer on their machine tools. Now the standard chuck size is 12 inch and that can operate at 3000 RPM. And with these machines, they are available in various configurations. But as this machine is here in stock as an X demonstrator, it, it does have two spindles, main spindle and second spindle, as well as the B-axis milling head to give you complete multi-axis, multi-function machining capability. Now when it comes to high precision, this machine is equipped with spindle cooling, a BMT built-in motor turret, it's got ball screw core cooling as well as heat control measures for the turning spindle. Now why do you buy a machine of this nature? Well if you're looking to reduce setup times and machine parts in one hit that's exactly what this machine is for. If you currently have two machines and you're second opping and you're moving parts from one machine to another it's far more economical to have one machine in a smaller footprint like this machine that we have behind us. If you're looking for additional tool capacity within your machine, the carousel on this X demonstration machine actually has a hundred tools. And also simple things like the access, the double door, it's got a very wide opening door and the access is great and as you look into the machine, what I can only describe as a fully integrated swarf conveyor that comes with this X demonstration model. So if you're interested in this machine, you can find out more details on mtdcnc.com or you can visit DMG Mori Direct. You can come and see this machine. And as I said earlier, if you've aspired to ever buy a DMG Mori and thought it was out of your league and out of your reach, maybe it isn't anymore. Thanks for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and put your cycle time guess in the comment box below and we'll be announcing the winner next week. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.